Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for People Ops Best Practices, Managing People and Teams with Agile Goals, sponsored by A-Team and presented by Zorian Rotenberg. Before we begin, <clears throat> I'd like to remind you that this webcast has been pre-approved for HICI credit and can also be used for SHRM credit. Please be sure to, com um, to complete the webcast in order to receive your credits. You'll receive an email from HR.com within one to two business days with your certification credit information. You can also log in to HR.com and go to your View My Credits page where you can see the credits that you've received. If you have any questions today for our presenter or for HR.com, please type them into the questions tab on your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll be sure to follow up with you. And it's now my pleasure to turn you over to Zorian Rotenberg. Sylvie, thank you so much, uh, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon or maybe morning for, for some of you. Um, I uh, want to cover a couple of things that we will uh, talk about here. Just first thing about myself. I'm Sorian, a, I can't hear you. Uh, Sylvie, I can hear you though. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. So let's see, maybe it's on the Sylvie side. Can uh, if if somebody cannot hear us, or if you could hear us rather, would you please uh, type in you know anyone just like that all is good and write in the chat so we can see it. Yeah, so everyone says I can hear. Thank you all so much, Sylvie. This may be on your end, but I will continue. So thank you all so much for confirming that you can hear me. That that is super helpful. Thank you. Um, so really quick about myself. I am uh, I'm I'm an operating executive. A lot of the things that I talk about here are uh, coming directly from my experience of managing companies, managing people uh, all across the globe. I had a lot of teams spread out in many different companies. Um, so a lot of the insights are really based on that, and hopefully this webinar will be insightful and educational and edifying, but definitely not um, not boring. That's my intention. Um, on our agenda, we'll talk about Google's secrets of uh, using goals, agile goals, to manage their teams. And uh, there will be a lot of good stuff here, a lot of uh, research from Google as you'll learn about Project Oxygen uh, that they did on whether managers uh, at companies actually even matter. Crazy question, right? But but they did ask that. So um, why also many people ops HR, actually, by the way, we will talk about what is the difference between HR and people ops, or rather even why people ops? Where did that come from? I'll actually tell you a little secret, except for those people who read a, a book called Work Rules from former uh, senior vice president of people ops at Google. You'll probably know where this comes from. Um, you know, why are people ops slash HR implementing agile goals or uh, what a lot of people know as OKRs, objectives and key results? Uh, how strategic HR is the CEO's partner in connecting strategy to execution? Uh, why Google's HR you use the OKR method um, to get Google uh, to the success uh, level that it is today, and uh, and ultimately, why you know how people ops improves improves employee experience by using objectives and aligning everyone internally, and much much more. So, not to spend the rest of the webinar on the agenda, uh, let's uh, let's get going. So, first of all, let's start with why is HR uh, so incredibly strategic, right? Not just important, but strategic to the company, right? And uh, as you all well know, the performance of your company is directly linked uh, to the performance of your people, right? Companies are people, right? If you take all the people out of the company, the, you know, the you know the desks, the computers, um, the actual office, real estate space, they can't really produce results. So it is really your people, right, that are directly affecting the success of the company. And as you know, HR is all about people. And there was this interesting article in Harvard Business Review uh, just a couple of years ago, it wasn't too long ago, um, that uh, they talked about the role of modern HR. And, 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 and interestingly enough, the actual title, which was on the front page of HBR, was It's Time to Blow Up HR. Um, holy smokes, that's a really, really aggressive title, right? But But what did they really mean? What did the research show and what did the – the practitioners, operators, and academics sort of combined their heads together, you know, specifically Ram uh, Sharan 
and Dominic Barton and Dennis Carey. Uh, what is it that they really kind of thought up and what were they trying to share with us in terms of their findings and insights? And they basically said, look, CEOs know that they depend on their company's HR to achieve success uh, because it's not businesses and, you know, computers and desks that create value. It's the people, right? And we just talked about it on the prior slide. And elevating HR requires totally redefining the work content of the HR team, of the executive and, and on down, right? Um, and businesses will benefit from better management of not just its financial resources, but it's human ones, right? So sort of let's bring to the forefront the strategic impact of HR in sort of unlocking this value of people because it is these people, if you amplify their value and unlock value, that drive the performance of the company, right? The company's performance is directly linked to the people's performance. And that's all in the hands of HR. But why are we referring to HR as people operations, especially here on this webinar. Um, well, it's interesting. Um, we've noticed, we actually did this uh, research on LinkedIn of, uh, of this increase of title shift from HR to people ops or the creation of new people slash people ops roles. Um, and, and sort of where did that come from? This hasn't been a thing you know, some years ago, but it's interesting. So if you read this book, Work Rules, which I highly recommend because this book is, you know, <laughs> it's interesting that the subtitle of the book is Insights from Inside Google that will transform how you live and lead. I, I kind of think it's pretty, pretty true because um, in this book, the former senior vice president of people ops of Google, which is really HR, he divulges kind of like all the secrets of how Google managed its people more effectively and created people processes. And he talked about, um, towards the end of the book, this really interesting uh, uh, section there, and he said that at Google, um, when he was joining, they told him, let's not give you a title of HR. Let's instead call you people ops. And he was like, well, what the heck is people ops? He's never heard of that before. Uh, but they said, look, we're Google. We're a very engineering-focused um, organization. And if we use... The words HR, um, you know, it's not going to fly really well here at Google because HR is going to, you know, make people think it's much more about kind of getting payroll out on time or getting people benefits and, and talk about sexual harassment, you know, training and all that. Uh, in contrast, operations will be viewed by, by the very engineering um, focused company as a very credible title, connect, you know, sort of connoting some actual ability uh, as he called it, to get things done, which is like I read it and I was like, well, that's not – HR very much gets things done, but from an engineering perspective at Google, it meant something different. It meant that um, it's not about, you know, the typical things that are attributed to HR, but much more about maximizing the, the outcome of operations of the company and operations depend on people. So it's maximizing employee value and, and improving the management of, of human capital – meaning improving the managers who manage other people and improving ultimately employee experience. That's what it meant. And I literally do think majority of HR today are very much interested and focused on enabling the operation, operational side of HR, the people ops, the, the improving the, the people processes of the company to get the best out of its people. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because it's also evident that HR impacts a lot of the most critical strategic statistics for the company. For example, if you read Harvard Business Review, um, these two very famous professors uh, of strategy, Robert Kaplan and David Norton, they, they did a study and they said, look, 95% of employees of any company don't fully understand the company's goals or what's expected of these very employees to help the company hit its goals which is really interesting. Like, how is it that out of 100 employees, 95 of them, uh, or out of every 10 employees, say like nine and a half or nine, and then some really don't understand the company's real goals, objectives, or even scarier, by the way, or don't really understand what's expected of them, what objectives they themselves have and how they're linked to the key priority objectives of the company. Wow, is that really true? I mean, it has to be because HBR actually 
um, does this research pretty analytically, and these two professors are world-renowned. So th this is as factual as it gets. Also, HBR found that 40% of global CEOs cite failure to align as the single greatest challenge to executing strategy. And align what? It's not align things. It's align people at the company, right? So again, HR slash people operations are a huge enabler of positive change in making these statistics actually get better, improve the statistic, go from 95% to only 5% may not understand, but 95% do, not don't. Or that, you know, alignment internally amongst people and departments is not an issue. Furthermore, uh, PwC, major consulting firm, said 84% of companies are not using their workforce to its full potential. And again, people ops. And then uh, corporate executive board, which was acquired by Gartner, um, you know, leading analyst firm globally, 50% um, of average workforce time is just wasted on unproductive work. So these are real statistics. And, you know, the best HR leaders, the best people ops leaders really understand them and think about how to solve these problems, right? And we'll talk a lot about this here. Gallup said that employees don't really know what's expected of them, right? Which actually impacts employee engagement and uh, even, you know, another statistic that people really are talking about today, employee experience. And employee experience is not just like, it's just like not as one, you know, one way street for employees to, to have a great experience at the company. Um, it, it also actually impacts the company's results, right? Employee engagement, being engaged in work, producing uh, high performance um, outcomes for the company, et cetera. But, but Gallup says, look, things are not looking great. And then you take all of this into account. And uh, the Brookings Institute with, with SHRM, um, of which you're, a lot of you are members, if not most of you, um, you know, they analyzed statistics and said, look, the cost of your workforce on average is about 70% of your, of your annual spend, right? So 70% of all of that is simply on your workforce. Everything else is like all these other things. So you're spending 70%. So of every, say, $10 million, $7 million, of every, every $100 million, $70 million is spent on your people, right? This is what people ops focuses on. <clears throat> and yet these folks are not clear about their objectives, are not clear how they impact the corporate objectives. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's no clear alignment of the company. And a lot of CEOs cite that as failure of success. That's extremely expensive. So that brings us to the next section, which um, in which we talk about, do managers matter, right? Um, and if they do matter, how do we use management as a lever, right, to amplify all the good that you want, all the value you want to unlock in your people at the company? And uh, the question of do managers matter sounds really wonky. It's like, why would you ask that? Well, I'm not the one asking that. It was actually Google, as you'll find out in a minute, posed that question and decided to run a global experiment internally on all its managers and do a scientific experiment of whether they could just completely get rid of management altogether. And it's really interesting that they asked that question because is there a reason to ask it? I think so because there are tons of statistics where employees complain and, and, and are not happy with their management. And uh, and look, I mean, one bad manager means that the five to ten people under that person are um, sort of – the badness trickles down, right? Those people's performance um, and their progress at work is uh, is biased by the lack of quality of management of their own manager. And um, – so it's interesting, right? So, and then there's this statistic from Harvard. They did this research a couple of years ago and published it. And they said employees complain about management about the following things. Like their manager doesn't recognize employee achievement. And by the way, with every one of these statistics, a great HR leader or manager or really anyone in HR or people ops should be asking the following question, sort of the question behind the question. If this is the case, then why do we need management? So, not recognizing employee achievement. So you go, if this is the case, why do we need managers? Like the employee 
will just have to sit there, look in the mirror, and recognize their own achievement. Why do we need a manager if they're not really recognizing the achievements? Another one is not giving clear directions. That's even worse, right? If you're not giving clear directions or you're not setting clear objectives as a manager for your team, for your direct reports, for your members on your team, then why do we need you as a manager? What is it that you're doing if not giving clear direction, right? Not meeting with employees, not spending enough time with them. <laughs> Again, why do we need a manager then? You're refusing to talk to subordinates? Holy smokes. I mean, that one, that number four from the top, I just don't get that one. That's a real one where you got to ask, why do we need them as a manager, right? So, and then you go on and on, right? But the bottom line is Google wasn't wrong in asking that question. Gallup says only two in 10 employees strongly agree that their performance is managed in a way that motivates them to do outstanding work. Okay. So um, if that is the case, right, if only two out of 10 people would come out and say, yeah, yeah, I very much agree that uh, my performance is managed, you know, well and motivates me well for my manager, then the other people really must hate their manager. Again, Google wasn't wrong to pose the question and take it so seriously of why do we need managers? Do we even need them in the first place? That they actually went on and did this big scientific study at Google that Harvard actually wrote a case study on it called Google's Project Oxygen. Do managers manage matter, right? And Google's conclusion after a lot of research is that research shows that managers matter. Right. And by the way, that's not all, because you may just go away and be like, of course, well, that's obvious. That was the obvious next slide What's the big deal. Right. Like, I can't imagine they would find that managers don't matter. That's stupid and that's boring. You know, I'm just going to, like, click out of here and I'll still get my credits. I'll go listen to the news. Well, hold on a second. I want to give you some interesting data points. Um, and inter it's interesting because um, they say here. Managers can have significant impact on business outcomes, right? Um, and they had this research that they posed and said managers matter a lot, right? So in 2002, Google ran an uncontrolled experiment by simply getting rid of all managers. Uncontrolled experiment. It didn't go well. So in 2008, a team of researchers set out to prove that what some at Google suspected, that managers don't matter, but very quickly the team discovered quite the opposite. Managers matter a lot. But the bigger question was, well, if they do, but yet there are all these complaints about managers, what's really going on here? In fact, it was so interesting, and by the way, we will get to it, but it was so interesting that Inc. and many other publications wrote about it, lessons from Google's failed quest to run a business without any managers, right? New York Times, Google's quest to build a better boss now suggests what they really came out with from that experiment. It wasn't simply the answer that managers actually do matter a lot. What was much more impactful and interesting and poignant is that they found out how to build a better boss, and it is the better managers that actually do matter. OK, so what were the key takeaways? So there were a number of things that Google realized and you can read about it. There were about like there are there's an updated research in Project Oxygen. They added a couple more factors and now it's like a total of 10 factors. But the key ones that I wanted to present to you today that make the most um, sort of poignant um, kind of takeaway here is uh, number one is clear strategy for the team. Right. It's about strategy is about also setting objectives, right, that connect that strategy to execution. They set clear objectives and create clear strategy for their team. They're also good communicators, good communicators of expectations to employees, good communicators of how to coach the employee in what they can do better, more effectively, right? Good communicators when it comes to recognizing employees' progress towards those objectives. They also do not micromanage. By the way, the little-known fact, and by the way, it comes really – valuable <coughs> excuse me in the context of this webinar is that setting objectives is what eliminates a big risk of micromanagement because micromanagement is standing over some, someone's 
shoulder and telling them every little thing that they should be doing, where to put the commas, where they should be, you know, how to spell the, you know, each word. <laughs> Maybe I'm dramatizing the, the point, but that's sort of like micromanagement. But when you set objectives, and when I say objectives, I don't mean like every day there's an objective. That's not an objective. Objectives are typically set quarterly, okay? Not even monthly, but you check in on those weekly. But throughout the week, you don't micromanage people because you give them clear direction in the form of, of objectives, communicate it effectively, and you check in on those. And by the way, we will talk about what is check-in as a formal practice. I'll actually teach you that. It's a big thing right now in all people op circles today. A check-in is like a thing. If a company, any company right now, that's not enabling their managers to do regular, when I say regular, I mean weekly check-ins. These are five to 10 minute quick check-ins with employees. Um, you got a huge opportunity to really improve things at your company in terms of management and in terms of um, really applying these learned lessons from Google's experiment, right? Check-ins are a big, big lever for success uh, in terms of uh, HR, people ops, enabling managers to do better as a manager. Uh, furthermore, discuss performance, and performance means towards your objectives. Um, a lot of times people think performance is some, you know, sort of thing in vacuum. You're just going to sit with people and give them very subjective feedback on their performance. That's BS, right? If you don't have objective way to measure people's progress with at least having some clear objectives set in place, I think it's meaningless to have performance conversations. Right, you're, you're just kind of like misleading them and yourself to think that that is a, an objective matter rather than arbitrary and subjective, or mostly so. If you didn't have objectives in the first place, and if your managers don't set those objectives, they don't have that clear strategy for the team, um, that's a problem. They will never be branded as a great manager by Google's scientific research. Um, they're very results-oriented. How can you be results-oriented if you don't have Objectives in the first place, objectives are about results. They're not about tasks. You know, objectives are not tasks. So by the way, we'll, we'll talk about that um, carefully uh, later in this presentation. And they're a good coach, right? They coach people, right, to be the best version of themselves to achieve and attain their objectives. Gallup also had research to complement what Google say, said. And by the way, to say, Google, yeah, yeah, you're right, Google. You're not the only one who found this out, but there was this uh, great book, The 12 Elements of Great Managing. What were the key takeaways? Great managers and great managing is connecting the job to the organization's mission. That is what Google called in the prior slide, you know, having the strategy and setting objectives for people, right? Connecting their execution to the corporate objectives through their own objectives that are aligned. Setting clear direction and what is expected. That's again, objectives. Discussing progress. Progress on objectives, recognition of good work. You recognize good work not just in vacuum or subjectively, but based on having actual objective data of progress towards objectives and enabling learning and growth. And you can learn and grow when you see where the gaps are, when you see how you perform towards your objectives. You're seeing a common theme here, right? McKinsey said, oh, Google. You were right, and so were you, Gail, right? They, they had this decoding leadership. What really matters? The key takeaways, again, were clarifying objectives, rewards and consequences of achieving objectives, developing people. Remember, Google was talking about coaching, right? <clears throat> Giving praise. That's that recognition, right? And then strong results orientation. Of course, setting objectives is all about achieving results on those objectives. Are you seeing the pattern, Right? So what are the consistent and repeating principles? Let's summarize them. Set clear objectives. Develop and coach. Feedback on the progress. That's like discussing progress a couple of slides ago. Giving recognition, of course, right? Remember that research about employees complaining about managers? The top one was managers are not recognizing them. And then strong results orientation, right? Again, you can't be results orientation oriented rather if you didn't have objectives in the first place, it's kind of misleading and, and deceiving to say, oh, you're doing a great job and you're achieving results. Well, if you didn't stipulate in the first place what the intended results you are seeking, which is, by the way, basically what an objective is. That's what a goal, objective, right? We're intending to see this result. It's our objective. It's our goal. I use those synonymously to achieve this result. And that is results oriented. Otherwise, if you don't have that, I'm not sure what you're oriented towards because you've never discussed or communicated 
with the result that is being sought. And by the way, I would call that the life cycle of effective management, right? Uh, this is in fact what our product exactly like is about. It does this, but this webinar is not about our product. It is about enabling people ops to enable the managers to be more effective through goals. And first and foremost, you said goals. There should be agile goals. Not once a year, but like quarterly. And you check in on them regularly. And that's about the second part, the progress check-ins. We'll talk about the formal definitions of a check-in, what it means. Feedbacking people, right? Recognition of progress towards objectives. You identify that during the check-in. Check -in. And review snapshots. These review snapshots are basically uh, the continuous version of uh, what is uh, a legacy, what is known as a legacy annual performance review that no good company does anymore. Um, and I mean that <laughs> when I say that. If you're a good company, don't do annual performance reviews. Do the regular sort of quarterly or semi-annual review snapshots, which are grounded and founded on these regular check-ins. Right? They're integrated and unified. It's not like one or the other. Uh, by the way, doing an annual review twice a year is just doing a bad thing twice. If you're not doing these regular check-ins and not setting objectives, uh, that's a fail. So that's the life cycle of effective management. Jack Welsh, former GE chairman and CEO, he said, before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. But when you become a leader, success is all about growing others. Managers matter. And they manage other people. Anything good is amplified 10x to their entire team. That is why it's so important for human resources and people ops. Remember we talked about the Harvard Business Review article in the first few slides and the research about um, how what the modern people ops and HR is all about. It's unlocking people value. Right? That's what the CEO needs you all for, to unlock people value. Well, how do you do that? It's uh, exactly through these processes we're talking about. Deloitte um, said the same thing to summarize the, this whole section is that it all starts the modern, this is 2018 research. This is a couple of months ago, fresh of the press. Deloitte, first you start with goal setting, right? The people ops, the HR team, they enable goal setting at the company. If you don't have that, don't have any reviews. Don't have any performance reviews. Definitely don't have annual reviews. But how can you do any reviews subjectively and arbitrarily when you didn't have goals in the first place? That makes no sense. And so many companies have done that historically. It's mind-boggling, and but it's not surprising that all these statistics are coming out about how these annual reviews that are done subjectively are uh, sucking up tremendous amount of resources and time and are costing companies money but are completely ineffective, entirely, completely despised and ineffective. Anybody doing them, that's like a crime, literally. That is a corporate crime. It's an HR crime. Shouldn't be doing it. But if you want to do it correctly, start with goal setting. Use OKRs, for example, objectives and key results, the system that Google made popular. Do these check-ins, do the feedback, coaching development, performance snapshots. That was the life cycle of management I showed you uh, that our software actually does exactly this. So people ops and uh, helping managers learn to do agile goal setting. So Google, after they did this project oxygen and, and suspended the concept of management and realized that actually management matters, they also realized another thing is um, that the doing goals is critical. Why? So research shows that performance is higher when people are committed to their goals. That's what's highlighted on this page. This is a website that Google put out there publicly for other companies to learn, right? Research shows that performance is higher when people are committed to goals, which means why wouldn't you then have goals? If research and Google have done the scientific experiment and said, this freaking works, hands down, 100% definitively, epidictically, it works, damn it, it works, do it. Why wouldn't you, right? It just makes people perform better. Then, Laszlo Buck, the senior vice president of Google's HR, but named and branded as People Ops, he wrote this book, we talked about it earlier, and in there he talked a lot about setting agile goals. And Google says, they, they call it OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. That's the system we also use in our software. It's a very simple goal-setting system. 
Then Google, uh, sorry, I flipped uh, uh, quickly, but Google uh, did this video that has now over half a million viewers, and they only launched this video a couple of years ago. How do you get half a million or more managers and executives to watch about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half, about doing goal setting, objectives and key results, right? Goal setting. It must be really popular. It must be working. And it's one of the most interesting things today that attract uh, HR people, ops leaders, and CEOs and COOs and other managers to use the system because it works. Just about a month ago, the original investor in Google named John Doerr, he released a book called Measure What Matters. And it's like a top seller right now on Amazon. It's a great book. Um, and uh, he introduced Google to OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. The subtitle of the book is How Google Bono, yes, that Bono from U2, and Bill Gates use OKRs to succeed, right? They call it to rock the world. I don't know if, um, I don't know, I guess, if Bill Gates would think of it as rocking the world, but Bono sure would, right? And, uh, it's all about using goal setting to unlock this incredible value in your organization. Really what that Harvard Business Review article wrote about HR and HR's modern uh, role to unlock people's value. There is a book uh, written by uh, Paul Niven and Ben Lamort, both great friends of our company. Ben Lamort is actually um, an advisor at our company on the board of advisors. Um, they wrote this amazing book specifically about objectives and key results that a lot of uh, HR and people ops managers, executives, and leaders have been reading for the past uh, year or two about what OKRs are. And look, OKRs are just simply goal setting. Um, the original goal setting methodology that a lot of successful companies embraced years ago was uh, written about in the practice of management by Peter Drucker, who is known as the Dean of Modern Management. Um, and he wrote this like in the 60s, right, 1967. Um, but Andy Grove at Intel, in his awesome book, High Output Management, another fantastic book, he took MBOs and called them Intel MBOs. So he added some additional criteria to make MBOs management by objectives practice um, a little bit more effective in the more modern world. And that's really what Google was introduced to because John Doerr, who wrote this book that I showed you a couple of pages ago, Matter, you know, Manage What Matters, Measure What Matters, uh, he introduced Google to, um, to the Intel MBOs, IMBOs, and ultimately Google branded them as OKRs, or there was someone else who branded them as OKRs, and by that point, they were just known as OKRs rather than Google using Intel MBOs. But it was the same concept. Um, and, and, it, and it really took off after Google made it famous in that video. Um, and now I would say like anybody you talk to is using or starting to apply the goal setting method of OKRs at their company. And, and, and they're in all of it. Like it's just really enabling the company to get aligned and grow. Uh, by the way, if you want more details about how OKRs work, you can literally just go to our website, a team. That's how it's pronounced, a team like Nintendo Wii with two I's. <laughs> but it's A-T-I-I-M, and two I stand for including individuals. But ATeam.com, and then the top, you're just going to go to OKR Goals. That's the second choice in the menu. and Click on OKR Goals 101. It's free. I'm not trying to sell this to you. I'm just hoping you learn uh, all the best practices you can get your hands on. But you can get about info about OKRs and send it to your team, and hopefully they learn. So... The thing is that today's CEOs and their HR partners, the strategic partner HR, is that HR people ops that has a direct strategic impact to help uh, the CEO unlock value like in that HBR article. A ton of companies globally, it's, it's a wave, it's a tsunami. Um, they're transitioning their team in the direction of running and managing employees with objectives using OKRs because OKRs is just the simplest and most written about system today that Google keeps writing and writing about. Um, just to you know, just to share best practices with others. They don't sell anything. They're just trying to you know share best practices. Uh, like Google's motto: "Do no evil, or <laughs> just do good." Right? Share. Um, look, and you know, OKRs are different. They're set quarterly. They're not set 
once a year. They're checked in on weekly, right? They provide clarity, alignment. That's what makes them great. These are the types of companies that use OKRs. These are more companies that use OKRs. Just trying to share with you, this is a real tsunami. It's a huge wave globally. Um, unlike most goals in this webinar is about people ops and helping managers be great managers with application of goal setting processes that help everyone be aligned on the same page. It is the goal setting process like OKRs that enables the conversation where the manager can coach effectively, where the manager can provide feedback effectively, when the manager can have that progress conversation effectively, be an effective manager. In order to be an effective manager, you have to set goals in the first place. Otherwise, it's all vacuous, in vacuum, right? It's 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 uh, ethereal. It's not really uh, it's not real. It's not substantive to to give people progress and performance coaching based on having no objective set in the first place. It makes zero sense. But OKRs are a great agile goal setting system. They're simple, transparent, regular check-ins. They're quarterly. They create full alignment and cascading and waterfalling and um, alignment capability that is not otherwise easily possible. And COs and HR implement OKRs as part of performance management. So if your um, you know, top three thing this year is to, to get rid of an annual performance review and do performance management, start with goals. That is the first, that's the tip of the spear. Without that, it's pointless. And it's all about clear communication, helping connecting employees' goals to, what's, to what matters at the company's uh, executive level, improving focus on what truly matters, better agility, better alignment, transparency, um, and uh, employee experience and engagement. Now let's talk about connecting employees to the company mission. HR and people ops, again, back to that HBR article, do that through goals. There's a quick you know, story from, from this book, The Practice of Management, about a traveler um, who comes into a town square, travels through town, and he sees three stonecutters. He comes to the first stonecutter and goes, hey, what are you up to? What is it that you're doing? He was just curious. And the first stonecutter looks at him, puzzled, goes, can't you see? I'm cutting stone. It's like, <laughs> can't you see? This is obvious. Um, he thanked him and then walked up to another stonecutter and said, hey, so what are you doing? And the second guy goes, well, can't you see? Just making a dollar, making a living. And then he came up to the third stone cutter and said, hey, what are you doing? And the third uh, stone cutter looked at the traveler and said, well, hey, uh, can't you see? I'm building a beautiful cathedral. The mindset was completely different. The third stone cutter had a very different objective that was connected to a much bigger overarching result, goal, to build a beautiful cathedral, right? Um, and I don't know if any of you have been to Barcelona, but it really is very beautiful. But the first two just thought they're just cutting bricks and or stones and uh, simply uh, making a living. They didn't understand. They didn't understand what the goal was. And that, believe it or not, while the story is, is great, um, this is really happening at any organization, <coughs> excuse me, and if it, your organization managers are not setting objectives that align to the top corporate objectives, guess what's happening right at your company, right under your nose, right there. This screen is simply a screenshot um, of how that works in technology, how a company or HR or managers can actually use technology like software to connect people, uh, set up goals for them. Um, and connect what they do to the company's strategic priorities or objectives, and people can get feedback on whether they exemplify uh, some of the core values and make the progress towards the company's objective. This ability to feedback people through software actually refocuses them on what really matters and enables you to create alignment in a way that's not otherwise possible. Because remember those statistics from Harvard, Employees complain. What are the biggest complaints? Well, it's the ones where they're not getting recognized for, for what they're exemplifying and, and, and the progress they're showing. Um, they're not getting clear direction. Well, you can do all of that. You can be the opposite of those uh, negative statistics at your company by using technology, right, to set goals, to create alignment, like over here, to create uh, regular feedback that's captured and that people pay attention to. And it makes all the difference.
right? It makes all the difference. Um, it's a it's a forcing function and a force multiplier, right? To use technology to create a better people process internally. You can create alignment like this, right? You set top, top company goals as CEO, working with executive team and HR, people ops leader, division departmental goals, team goals, and then individuals get goals. Um, each individual can then very easily see what are the top company goals? What are my team goals? It means what are the goals that my managers is re managers are responsible and for? And what are my own goals? And how do they all directionally align? Right? You can see them right clearly during your check-in. It's very obvious. It's very simple. It's one click. Done. And then you can create a more of a strict alignment where you can connect goals. This is also enabled by technology. Hard to do in PowerPoint or email. Slightly possible in Excel, but extremely painful. But super easy and agile and simple in a technology product. This is right a screenshot of, out of our own product. Yes, I'm slightly inadvertently, well, no, advertently promoting it, but to your benefit, hopefully. Um, you can actually connect goals in such a way that it looks like an organizational chart, an org chart out of Management 101 uh, classic textbook, but it's not a management org chart. This is not about who manages whom. This is about top goals that get contribution and alignment from sub goals right, using this OKR methodology. And when progress is being made underneath by these sub-objectives, they directly have these ripple effect and contribution to the progress of the objective to which they align. It's pretty awesome, right? It's not like a task management tool where you just have a bunch of tasks and then you just move them around and check them off. There's no progress where you connect things and they contribute. And when the five things underneath have made progress. You combine their progress and weigh it and impact the goal to which they align, and it shows the overarching composite progress. That's pretty cool. I say that because it's our software, and I'm very proud of it, and I like it. I like it, and a lot of our customers do as well. It makes a difference when people can see that visually. So, uh, But, you know, with, with a flexed self-promotion of our product aside, I do want to get back to the educational part, um, and look, managers need to run their goal setting process. The technology allows HR or people ops to enable it, empower everyone internally and guide them and administer it. And HR being sort of in the captain's seat of enabling goal setting, of making the, the company more aligned. And it's, it's a, that is exactly what the CEO wants from that Harvard Business Review article talking about modern role of HR. I have been harping on it, but it's so important, so powerful. That is what that is what HR and people ops is all about. Unlocking people's value and nothing else. Nothing else matters. Ultimately, everything that's being done is just for that purpose alone. That's it, right? So <clears throat> technology should be administered and empowered by HR, um, but unless the managers... Unless the technology, the user experience is built from the ground up for managers to like it and use it and for employees to get some value out of it, nobody will want it. But that's how modern technology like our product, ATM, is built to be empowered and supported by HR as a partner to all the people in the company and for the people in the company with managers and their teams using it and getting immense value out of it, the alignment, the feedback, the coaching, the progress that's objective and not subjective, right? So what about helping CEOs in implementing a goal-setting process? Well, HR does that through performance management. Wait, but what is performance management? And why am I defining performance management? Because most companies don't define it correctly. It's all wrong. Performance management starts with, look at the first bullet point, establishing measurable goals and objectives for employees and then attaining those, right? A lot of people are completely incorrectly defining what performance management means, right? Performance management is not the annual appraisal and rank. That, that's part of old school performance management process, but that's not what it is singularly and individually and exclusively. And I'm not even going to get into the whole thing about killing in the annual performance review because there's so much to be said about how to kill it correctly. Um, again, I'm going to repeat, it's not about just doing it twice a year. That's, 
That's just doing the wrong thing twice. <laughs> Don't double down on the wrong, on the bad. But look, back to performance management. Most importantly, performance management is management. So it's not that HR does performance management. Managers do performance management. And HR guides managers to unlock that value, empowers management, brings in the right technology and, the, and, and teaches the right best practices, brings those to the CEO to have a project, a process, to learn internally and then implement and teach the others in the company how to do it right. The three keys to success in helping your CEO as his um, key partner from HR, from people perspective. Discretion, use your discretion, right? Co use common sense, because common sense is not so common. Use it, and walk before you run. Don't make everything perfect. Use discretion. What applies and doesn't apply at your company, right? I mean, it, it's a complicated question, which is why I'm gonna offer you at the very end of this webinar, Free consultation on how to do this right. You know, we have a lot of uh, executives and professionals at this company that talk to, um, you know, for free, truly just to build a relationship, whether you want to use our technology, our software to, to enable this internally to help you make it easier uh, and make it more agile. Um, but but we're happy to help and share the, the information we know that we've collected with hundreds of companies uh, over the past few years. But discretion, common sense, and work before you run. Don't try to focus on everything. Don't try to do too much when you implement goal setting. Start with the executive team. Don't set too many goals, right? Few goals, three to five, and that's it. Uh, per executive, right? Per you know, at the company level, per individual, per team, three to five. You don't need more than that. Um, each objective must have an owner. Steve Jobs uh, used this uh, this uh, concept called DRI, directly responsible individual. You're the owner. You can't just have goals out there hanging in the air in vacuum, right? They need to be owned by someone because without responsibility, there's no accountability. I just gave you the, the most obvious things um, for implementing, and I think you, you have the most basics right now to start learning about OKRs and implementing them. And if you want more, of course, you can come to us. Our technology makes it super easy to implement in our training and onboarding. Um, it's like a mobile app on your phone. Boom, boom, and, you know, click, click. Set up, done, and ready to go, goals in place, ready to do check-ins, and it's that easy. It's that easy. But you can do it um, and begin learning about it just simply with the information you have right now. Um, now, check-ins, right? This section of it is about check-ins. Uh, Andy Grove, who introduced uh, you know, Intel MBOs, which became known as OKRs at Google, he said the key to all of this is just to set, and set them and do the check-in on the goals frequently. Frequently means once a week. Um, Donna Morris, who's very well known in the HR world, uh, she was vice president of people ops at Adobe. She said swapping out an annual review in favor of regular check-ins was everything. It was this like lightweight process, very quick, few minutes a week that every manager is connected and aligned with their direct reports. Amazing stuff. It's not a team meeting. It's like a check-in is like a quick one-on-one -on -one with the direct report on the progress they're making, any bottlenecks that, they, that the manager can help with, etc. GE said the same thing. We're moving to continuous touch points. And this is GE a couple of years ago. Combining goals with feedback, this like regular check-in, not just setting goals for people. And it's not a set and forget situation. You're combining goals and this regular check-in with feedback. That means everything. It significantly increases performance of people and at your company because we talked about it earlier. Company, uh, company's performance is directly linked to the performance of your people. Doing check-ins more regularly puts you um, in the top quartile of the performance of your industry. Because you know what? Again, we're going back. Do managers matter? Well, yes, they do. Google told you that. They did that research project, Oxygen. And, and having managers do check-ins is one of the most important jobs of a manager. Doing them regularly ensures consistent alignment and people refocusing on what truly matters. 94% of employees prefer that managers do these regular check-ins, right? And how do they work? You just do them every one, every week. But you can do, we have some customers, very large, you know, multi-billion dollar companies, they prefer to do them like, twice a month, every two weeks, or, you know, we have one that likes to do it once a month, a check-in between a manager and their direct report. I don't think it's the most effective thing. I think they're also learning to start doing it more frequently. But look, 
if you're a very large company, start there. Uh, we typically work with companies that are between, um, I would say, a sweet spot of 100 employees to 1,000 employees, mid-market companies, right? We have a lot of customers that are between 50 and 100 as well, but but mostly it's 100 to 1,000 employee companies, mid-market. And most of them regularly do ch- have their managers do check-in once every week. And the product reminds them. The product is configured by us for you to have notifications, gamification, get them in the check-in mode, update how good things are going, you know, send the update uh, to the manager, etc. There are huge benefits. I don't want to read all these seven points to you. You can read better than me. And uh, we can give you this presentation if you want to email us. I'll show you how to do that in just a couple of slides. You can just send us um, hi, literally H-I, hi in the subject line. And, you know, uh, we will send you this presentation. Uh, we'll offer you a live demo of the product if you want to see it. Um, one of the few final things I want to say is goals are not tasks. This webinar is about people ops enabling their managers, who we found out from Google actually do matter quite a lot. And these managers must set goals. We learned also from Google that goals matter and they increase performance. Um, and this is about goals, creating the better engagement, better experience, better alignment, better performance, all coming from Google and real data. Um, but goals, I must say, are not tasks. That's a big, big mistake I see a lot of people thinking. Um, Luke Gerstner said uh, something actually very similar. He was CEO of IBM and RGR Nabisco, a very successful executive. He, um, he said something that John Wooden, you know, probably the greatest sports coach of all time, said also that, you know, don't mistake activity with results. Just being busy doesn't mean you're achieving results. Goals state what the intended result needs to be. That's what goals are. If you word them as like, you know, uh, send five emails, that's not a goal. Um, that's very task oriented. You know, tests are something that takes, you know, from an hour to a couple of hours to do. Projects are something that could be a couple of days to, to several weeks maybe, right? Then there's like bigger initiatives that could take a month. I don't know, right? But like those aren't all goals. A goal is a quarterly thing. Um, you, you word it quarterly. You, you set a measurable intended outcome, a result. That's why it's called objectives and key results that you want, right? So don't mistake being busy. A task is a to-do. A project is a bunch of different tasks, and a goal is a future state, an outcome you want to achieve. By the way, um, it sounds easy right now, but, of course, it takes time to perfect the art of wordsmithing your goals. We also help you with that. We give you free consultation. There's a ton of training right on our website. It's free content. Like I told you earlier, come to our website, ateam.com, A-T-I-I-M. Um, ton of stuff there. Um, task tracking tools are totally, absolutely, definitively not goals management tools. Just having a to-do list or putting things in your calendar or using something like Trello or or Jira or Asana or like my favorite is Microsoft Project. Okay, you have project and contingency of different pieces of the project and the Gantt chart, but that's not goals. That just shows you when things will start and finish. Um, and when the next thing resumes, right? You know, you need a project management to build, I don't know, a building, right? But that's not the goal. The goal is really just have a successful building built at the end that doesn't fall apart or just, you know, build one great building. That's a goal. Everything else is just goals, you know, project management or task management. It's not goals management. So be wary of that. Um, don't use those tools for something they're not built for. And uh, look, those are the key things I wanted to share with you the findings from Google and everything I promised you in the agenda. I hope we accomplished and it was useful, educational, informative, and edifying and and entertaining, hopefully. Um, If you want a live software demo, it's a, don't worry, we're not trying to sell you, like we're not forcing you to do anything. Um, It's a uh, online demo. Somebody will show you how the product helps you set goals, how it gives you like a goal wizard to pick different goals, how you create alignment, you know, you can just like learn how this works because that's just useful insight for how technology today enables an HR or people ops role of unlocking value of enabling your managers through your company, which your CEO is going to hug you and kiss you uh, and love you for. Uh, well, maybe not kiss you, but maybe hug you, uh, but certainly really respect you for. Um, but we can show you how that works. So you have those insights. And with that, uh, if you see a live demo, we'll throw in anything else you need, you know, free goals consultation, 
copy of this presentation, free books and guides, um, unless you just want to fill out some forms on our website. But look, very easy. Just just in the subject line, say hi and send it to cdemo at ateam.com. You don't have to say anything else. Somebody, somebody very nice and gentle and kind will follow up with you and say hi in return and, and be uh, pleasant and, and thankful and, and, and courteously offer you time to hang out with us. And, you know, and if you're doing it during lunchtime, let us know. We'll buy you pizza. Um, and, you know, seriously, <laughs> we'll just, we'll, we buy sometimes people pizza and say, hey, check out our demo. We'll spend some time together. Um, and, you know, of course, it's only online. So you eat your pizza without actually being with us. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, even if you get dirty, we won't notice. But look, um, if there are any questions, um, can we take a couple, Sylvie? What do you think? Sylvia, I don't know if you had a audio issue. Yeah, we can, can, hear me. Oh, can there take you a couple of questions. Can you see any questions folks wrote down in the question uh, box? Very long comment, and I, I'm not even sure if there's a question in there, but if anybody has any questions uh, right now, please do feel free to type them in. And if we don't have time to get to them, then um, we'll definitely follow up with you later on. Uh, yeah, I noticed somebody has a comment. I'm having a hard time reading it because for some reason GoToMeeting doesn't allow you to expand that window, which is too bad. Uh, if, you, if you click on the little box to the right of the word questions, it's got a little corner and an arrow. It will actually pop the, the screen out for you. Still doesn't for some reason, but it's all right. Um, I think, I think um, you know, we. if anybody has questions, please ask them. You're welcome to... Email to see demo and actually ask a question. If you don't want to just say hi, you actually have a long question you want us to, to give you a free consultation on. Um, happy to help you out, even myself personally, since you were present right on the webinar. Um, we can definitely, you know, there are a lot of questions about goal setting implementation, etc. It's really not that hard. It seems maybe somewhat difficult. It's not that hard. Um, but we're happy to help and just develop friendly relationships over time and you know, be helpful to the uh, ecosystem. So with no, there is nothing else, yeah, go ahead. Please, sorry. Yeah. Uh, how do you get the C-suite to support and engage in OKRs? Honestly, I, I've i never been asked that question because the C-suite is the one who actually wants to engage and do OKRs. We have a ton of CEOs coming to us and saying, how do I do it? And how soon can I implement it? And can you help us uh, give us best practices? So. Um, I think honestly, maybe this is like a tongue in cheek answer, but like just tell them you heard about it and ask them, do you think we should do it? And <laughs> I think you're going to get a definitive yes. Because I can't imagine, it's like asking a CEO, hey, do you think it'll be helpful if we get better performance and alignment and make our managers more effective? It's the same question. So I guess ask them in that format, maybe. <laughs> Sylvia, anything else? Uh, no, there's a lot of thank yous here for you. Hey, I want to give a lot of thank yous to all of you. Really appreciate you spending the time. I hope it wasn't boring. If it was, uh, email me. I'll buy you ice cream or something to make up for it. In the meantime, thank you all so much. Have an awesome rest of the day. And uh, I hope you can email us and we get to know you. Um, and with no further ado, Sylvia, I'll pass it back on to you if there's anything else. Thank you very much, Zorian Rotenberg and A-Team.